Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Gratitude and encouragement is as important as constructive criticism. Welcome to The Advocate, your weekly reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a saner society. Today, I'm not on the attack. I'm exploring the response to a previous advocacy. Did Governor Sawolu hear me? He probably did. Chuka is illustrating David Diop's poem, Africa, My Africa, as a wake-up call to the current African youth, oh, this is reawakening my poetic side. Jumoke is on a quest to draw attention and actions to making life easier for those living with disabilities among us. For you, who makes his debut today, is saying, most of us don't hate corruption. We only hate the fact that we are not the beneficiaries. Once a journalist, they say, always a journalist. The journalistic side of treasure is taking on regulatory bodies today who seems to have failed in their duties so much that the Nigerian lawmakers are now on the quest to sanitize the profession. Sit back, your five panelists are here and eager to present your Sunday dose of provoking thoughts with no hold bar after the break. Leadership means duty, honor, country, Criticism, character, and a listening ear to the voices of the led. Did Governor Sawolu hear me? Democracy, they say, is a constant job of interrogation, education, explanation, listening, and communication. That's why I showed that when governor's aides seek the head of people for daring to criticize their boss. As a leader, criticism should motivate you rather than distract you. The Lagos State Governor has shown through his recent action in respect of my advocacy on abandoned project, that he would rather listen to criticism with intent to understand and remedy his faults with a mindset to respond through press releases that are full of half-truth and innuendos. Sometimes last year, I pointed the governor to the fact that considering the non motorability of the Maituto Badagri Expressway due to a road construction that has taken an eternity to build Despite the fact that the current Minister of Works, Babatunde Raji Fashola, is a former governor of Lagos State, and also the Speaker of House of Rep, Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, a lawmaker from Lagos State. I stated in my advocacy then that the dredging of the water channel from Badagri to CMS, as outlined in two phases of Ebuti Ojo to CMS and Ebuti Ojo to Badagri, was abandoned by his government. The governor heard me clearly and rather than respond through a press conference, as some would have done, he responded through his action by correcting what I complain of. Indeed, his action has shown clearly that he took my advocacy to heart by not being fixated only on road construction in an aquatic state like Lagos, but also ready to harness the aquatic transportation potentials of the state. He has immediately commenced the dredging of the water channel from a booty or jaw to Badagri, which I complain was abandoned then. You see, government, they listen when we talk. So no fear. Talk your own. They go here. Majority of the residents in this area were still looking, looking forward to the federal government completing the My Two to Badagri Road are very elated with the dredging of the water channel. It is their belief that this development will not only ease transportation and movement of goods and services to and from Badagri to CMS, but also help the durability of their boat, considering the new depth of the channel. They are also of the firm belief that considering the current depth 
of the water after dredging, it would be easier for it to accommodate water from rain channel in Okokomaiko, Alaba, and Janiki, thereby reducing and easing the flooding in these areas of the state. You can call it using one stove to keep multiple beds. You won't be wrong. Well, I say kudos to the governor for doing more of listening than talking and matching same with action. Rather than pointing accusing fingers, I would advocate that His Excellency should take it a, for, a notch further by dredging the water channel from Maryland through Ifako Bridge to Lagos Island. This will also bring back the nostalgia feeling of navigating by boat from Maryland to Lagos Island through the Odoyala Rope Channel, which got its name from the famous arrow tie and die that actually originated there from. This channel was known then for commuting passengers from Maryland to Lagos Island through the lagoon via Ifako until it became blocked and abandoned. Opening up same will not only ferry commuters to and fro Lagos, but also help ease flood in Ojota, Mende, and Bagada area. I don't want to remind him of the CMS to Ekpe before he go say that they ask for too much, but I still ask Sha, I hope he understands. But seriously speaking, considering the man are wasted in traffic in Lagos by residents and commuters alike, being an aquatic state, the possibilities derivable from dredging and opening up these water channels cannot be quantified. Lastly, while I praise the governor for doing more of listening than talking, I urge him not to relent until Lagos becomes the Venice of Africa in terms of water transportation. For we don't just set out to look for fault lines in government activities, we also look out for areas where they have made remarkable progress. While we give knocks for the former, our kudos are only reserved for the latter. Mr. Babajide Sawolu, you have earned my kudos on this. But before I go, let me use this opportunity to congratulate my friend and brother, Justice Raman Oshodi, on his elevation to the bench by the Lagos State Government. My Lord, as your lawsuit, please. Ah, okay, so this, I think this week all of us have come to praise Lagos for one thing or the <laughs> other because, um, well, the truth about it is the, the reason we criticize so much in Nigeria is we hardly find things to praise the government about. True. And to be fair to them, right, when they do well, then it's right to also commend them and encourage them because what we want is a better life, you know, not just to be seen to criticize. So we're happy for the dredging. Me, yeah, I know go join that boat too. <laughs> yeah, I don't no, but do seriously, yeah, I know they before do. your steps in, seriously, for me, going to a papa these days, it's easy for me. I take a boat from CMS, to I can go to a papa from CMS five times a day and back. But because I just take your... a boat from there, eight minutes I'm in a papa, do whatever I have to do, take a boat back, and then I drive home. Unlike those days that I have to stay in traffic, driving from Bagada to Apapa. So for me, just like going to Venice and you see, we I'm... want to use this same water. Venice. Venice is not Nigeria, it's not Lagos. Yes. Yes. I was just going to say that you are such an audacious dream, very tall dream. No, but we can achieve it if we, we can, can dream it. We can actually. You yeah. can achieve whatever it is you yeah, do. I, I met a yeah. guy in Sierra Leone. There's a Nigerian guy. I think his name is Gaji or something like that. That's what he does. He's yeah. a, he's a, he's a, he's a, and he has his um, factory somewhere around Ekbe where he builds the boat himself. Yeah. And then he takes them down to Sierra Leone. So you know once you drop at the airport, uh, you have to cross water. But yeah. if you have to go by road, it's a longer route. So the guy actually build the boats and then he i think the president actually gave him the license oh, really? yes he does i think he has more than 40 and then he conveys people from the airport down to town uh, and that's what the guy does okay so it's possible yes we know but it would take political will to make it work yeah, you, you know everything in nigeria is politics that, that's another thing i, I remember a very sordid tale sorry of... chuka chuka wants to chuka um, yeah, I was just um, going to add that um, the boats that Ambode bought mm -hmm. are still not being used. The problem with Nigeria is not even so much not wanting, not knowing what to do, but politics actually blocking yeah. things. Yeah. If it wasn't that they, they would have had nothing to do, they wouldn't have released those buses that have now helped Lagos quite a bit. Yeah. Because we're more interested at first in, in, in getting Ambody to jail for presumably increasing the cost of the buses. <laughs> so I don't know what has happened now to the boats. 
Well, is... and while we talk about the boats, I, I mentioned it, I think, a few weeks back. At Lagos State, you remember the Blue Rail as well. Yes, yes, yes. Does she yeah. remember? So we use this opportunity to also say, I wanted remember to tell that. a tale of how the boats colla um, capsize. capsize on our... You were inside? No, I wasn't. <laughs> My <she> was. <laughs> <laughs> our <laughs> boats <laughs> capsize. And we always have... Um, we, we have them pretty regularly every year. Because um, one of my producers lost her mom that way, from CMS to Ikorodu. They never found her body till today. Oh, yeah, but so, I, I agree, accidents happen even on our roads. No, it shouldn't be. We, not as often. No, no, but it shouldn't it happen is, that often. See, let me tell you why I, I, I'm, um, I'm, um, I come from a riverine area. And I, so I understand the importance of river, uh, water transportation. Do you know that from Lagos to Saple by, by boat, ordinarily won't take you more An than hour. two hours plus. Okay. Lagos to Port Harcourt, you can assess Lagos to Port Harcourt by water. Yes. You can assess Lagos to Calabar via water. Yes. So why are we so fixated on the roads that are not motorable, on flights, and then we abandon the, the other one that uh, nature has given to have us? Have you considered the pirates also? I agree. That it, it's all, it's all yes. part of it. Pirates. That's why for me, if you if you... If you can dream it, there are steps you need to put in place to ensure yeah. security is one. You need to also dredge some of... Why are we so... Look at the Lagos port, for example. Congested. But yet, you have Calabar port. You have Port Harcourt port. Yeah. You have Onicha. I said earlier that it's political will. It's yeah. just political. It's, it's the That's work of those in governance to make sure that this thing... So since know. it's political will, Chuka is calling on Africa to wake up next. But before then, let me use this opportunity to say happy birthday to one of our own, Bolahan Olojede. Thursday was his birthday. And um, happy birthday, uh, Bolahan. And Chuka now, over to you. 